It's the therapeutic drive through We are in the drive through at Chick-fil-A and it is raining today, so you better bet the line is long. But we want to talk about Taylor Swift. This is for all you Swifties out there. Taylor Swift drops midnight, sells 800,000 copies in the first day alone, just reminding us of what a beast that she is and in true Taylor Swift fashion she's also left us a lot to speculate about who is this song after you know what is this trying to tell us and uh, what is really becoming the big topic for what is she trying to say is everyone speculating that Taylor Swift may have fact indeed suffered a miscarriage so one of the songs it kind of says, it says, um, I got a lot to live without. I'm never going to meet what could have been, would have been, what should have been you. So a lot of people are saying, did Taylor Swift, in fact, have a miscarriage? And so it brings up a topic of conversation. A lot of people are now commenting on posts from Taylor saying, yes, I had a miscarriage. I had a miscarriage. This is what I went through. There's a lot of people telling their stories. And so what I want to talk about with the therapeutic drive through today is how do you help a friend grieve who has had a miscarriage, okay? So I wanna start with that. So let's start um, with people, individuals who have had miscarriage tend to have a lot of self-blame. You know, why is it that my body can't do what everyone else's body is doing naturally? You know, why is it that, you know, I, I, I go to church, I'm a good person, I do all these things. Why can I not have a kid, but somebody who, let's say, you know, has 10 kids, they're like, they have no problem getting pregnant. Why can't I? What is wrong with me? So there is a lot of self-blame. And I do think you've got to keep that in mind. If you have had a miscarriage, you got to stop with the woulda, shoulda, coulda. Okay, so let's work on that. But if you have a friend that has had that miscarriage, you've got to keep that in mind that that's what they are going through. So that may be why they don't talk about it as often and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. And with that in mind, let's start out. Number one, be sensitive, okay? This was a significant loss for this individual. Keep that in mind, you know? If, if someone loses their husband, we send them flowers, we send them cards, we do all these things for them. But when somebody has this very private battle of a miscarriage, it tends to go unnoticed. So be very sensitive um, when dealing with this person because this was a significant loss for them. Number two, share their space, okay? Share their space with them. This may mean that maybe you you schedule a time to just go by this individual's house and just be with them. And when I say just be with them, I mean sit there while they share their story. Allow them to talk, okay? It is an uncomfortable situation. Some things in life are uncomfortable, okay? Let's get past that, okay? But the comfort you can provide to that person, okay, far exceeds any discomfort you may feel in bringing up this topic or talking to them. Um, let's see, number two. I always say, ask what they need, but what really needs to be said is, hold on two seconds. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Okay, so number two, and what I say when, you know, tell them what you're going to do for them when you ask them what they need. Because sometimes you could say, hey, you know what? I know that maybe your family um, is having a hard time this week. Let me bring you guys some dinner one night. And I guarantee they'll be like, no, don't worry about it. Instead, tell them. I'm going to bring you guys some dinner, okay, it, because it's the way I want to show that I care and, you know, and I need, would like to help out. 
uh, would um, Tuesday or Thursday be a better day to bring dinner? Or, or maybe what you say is, hey, um, I'm taking my kids to the playground this afternoon. Can I swing by and grab your kids? Because we would like to take them. That way, you know, you could have some time by yourself. Tell them you're going to do it. And then if they're, you know, give them the day. You can pick Tuesday or Thursday. I'm coming to do this for you. You pick what's better, okay? Um, also, focus on them. Sometimes... Uh, especially when pregnancies are involved. Sometimes people have to make tough decisions. Maybe it's a decision you wouldn't make. That's not the point. It is not about you, okay? This is about being comfort to them, okay? Never say, if I was them, I would have done this, because you don't know. You just simply don't know. So whenever they're sharing their story, allow them to share their story and be that comfort without giving your opinion about how things should work, okay? Just be there to be a rock for them. And another thing that you could do, especially uh, maybe you're talking about, you know, preterm loss and, and things of that nature is, you know, maybe, maybe one year, you know, or, you know, maybe after this has happened, you say to your friend, hey, you know what? The March of Dimes, they march for babies. What if we got a team together to honor your baby? You know, maybe we could do that. Maybe there's a place that sells bricks with names on it. And you're like, hey, you know what? I want to honor your baby this way. That would be a great thing to do. I want to finish with this because I'm getting really close to the meal delivery zone. I want you to remove these two things from your vocabulary when talking to individuals, especially parents who are grieving, okay? It is one, do not tell them to get over it. I don't care if it's been three months, if it's been six months, if it's been two years. You are not the get over it police. That is not your place to tell them how long they should grieve. Remove that from your vocabulary. The other thing I want you to stop saying to an individual, I know that you mean well with this. Stop telling parents who are grieving that their children are in a better place. Don't do that because to a grieving parent, you know where that better place is? That better place is in their arms holding them. It is not where you you think like, oh, they're in heaven, okay? Take that out of your vocabulary. I know you mean well, but it is very hard to hear as a grieving parent that the better place is for your kid to be somewhere else. It's hard to support somebody who is grieving, but give them time to tell the story over and over and over as many times as they need to. That's the therapeutic drive-through. Subscribe, like, sharing is caring, and here's my food.